Hi everyone, Simona here from Vector Twist. In this tutorial today, I would like to show you how you can create a haunted house card just for Halloween. I have a document open here and it's 5 by 7 inches. This is a good size card, but of course you can make it either smaller or bigger. This is really up to you. So first, let's select the rectangle tool and let's set the stroke to none and the fill to a nice orange. So here in the swatches panel, I'm going to choose an orange and then I'm going to fill the whole artboard here with an orange rectangle. I have my smart guides on, so it kind of snaps it into place. Next, we want to create some grass. Since the theme for our haunted house will be black, white and orange, I think the grass should be black. So let's choose a rectangle tool again. Then we pick the black here in the swatches panel. And let's just create a rectangle on the bottom of our artboard here. Let's actually make it a little bit bigger than the artboard. So I'm using the free transform tool and I'm pressing the option key or alt key and I increase the width. Now with the rectangle still selected, I'm going to go to effect, distort and transform and I'm going to choose roughen. Now here in the pop-up window, let's make sure the preview is selected and then I'm going to increase the detail from 10 inches to probably about 55. We can also play with the size and you can of course switch from relative to absolute. And just to show you how that looks, let me quickly switch it. It makes it much smaller. So if you wanted to have more detail and maybe an increased size, if you do absolute, or we switch back to relative and put it back down to 5%. I think we should decrease the size to approximately 2%. Then click OK. After that, with the shape still selected, let's go to object and let's expand the appearance. And then we want to crop it into place. Then I'm going to select the rectangle tool again, create the rectangle as wide as our artboard. The color doesn't really matter. Then I'm going to select both the black rectangle and our rough and shape. I'll open up the pathfinder tool and I'm going to select the shape mode intersect. And now we've created some black grass for our haunted house card here. We might want to increase it a little bit in height. So I just move it up with the direct selection tool. I'm just going to select both of the points here and then extend it. Of course, the next step is to add some elements for our haunted house. And the first thing we need is a haunted house. Now I've already created some Halloween assets. Now here I have some Halloween and haunted house assets. All of those shapes are ready to be used and placed in our card. And of course, if you like to, you can buy those assets on my website, vectortwist.com. The link is below in the description. Okay, so I'm going to choose this haunted house here, and then I'm going to paste it into our card design. With the free transform tool, I'm going to increase it in size and then place it approximately in the middle here. Now you can see we already have something fun looking here, but of course we need many more assets. So I'm going to switch back to the other file and let's see what we want to use. I'd say we're going to definitely have some bats. So I'm going to select those three here. Then let's select a pumpkin as well. Maybe a ghost, definitely the spider. And of course, let's select also a black cat. And while we add it, I have some fences down here. I think a fence would work very well too. So let's pick the straight fence here as well. I'll copy those and then I go back to our cart design file. Okay, so now our shapes have been pasted into our cart design and let's select the fence and increase it slightly. And let's move it over here to the side. I think we need to even make it a little bit bigger. And of course I need to cut this part away. So again, let's choose a rectangle. So we'll select both and then we're going back to the pathfinder and I'm going to cut it away. Then let's pick the cat and let's have it sit with our fence. And of course the pumpkin, we're going to move up and maybe make it a little bit bigger so we can see it better. Then here we have a ghost, but I think we should turn the ghost into white. And then we select some bats, rotate them, shrink them down and place them into our card design. Of course, what kind of size you choose, what kind of elements you want to add to your card design is totally up to you. But I just want to show you that with just a few haunted house or Halloween shapes, you can really create a fun card here for Halloween. Now let's grab the spider. And I think we're missing something. I think we need a moon. So let's select the ellipse tool, choose white as the fill, and let's create a moon and let's place it here. And of course the bat needs to be black and not white, maybe also a little bit smaller. And then let's go back to my Halloween shapes. And then here, let's pick a cloud. Then I'll copy it and then I'll go back to my card design and paste it in. Now the cloud, I'm going to increase in size and place it in front of the moon. 
Now our haunted house card is really coming together, but we need just a few more elements and also some text. So let's zoom in here and let's see what kind of text we want to add. Of course, let's add the text down here on the bottom into the grass. Let's just write Happy Halloween. But I want to make the word Halloween really stand out. And so I had an idea to create it out of bones. So instead of creating all the bones and building the letters together, I already have a bone brush ready that I can use. So let me show you. Now here you can see a lot of bones. We have all together 14 bones in three different variation. These are all bone brushes. And of course, those you can purchase as well, if you'd like to. Again, the link is down below in the description. I think I'm just going to choose this standard brush here. So I'm going to make a copy and go back to my card design. So let me paste it in here. Of course, it's super big right now, but this is just a path where the bone brush is applied to. Now, since I copied this over, and if I go into my brushes panel, you can see the brush has been added to my brushes panel. Now I can just select it and then play with the size. You can set the stroke here to really small or really big. And then you can use the bone brush to create any kind of lettering or any kind of other design you'd like. So I'm going to create the word Halloween with the bones. And so you won't get bored watching me do this all. We're going to speed it up a little bit. So just take a seat back and have a look. Now let's zoom out and let's see what we have here. So we're almost done here. We just need to add a few more finishing touches. I think we need to add a border. Now I select the orange rectangle. I'll go to Object, Path, Offset Path. Now in here I want to set, in the offset, I want to set a negative value. So let's put a minus in front and let's turn on the preview. So I think minus 9 points works really well, so I press OK. But instead of the orange fill, I'm going to turn off the fill and set the stroke to a black and then maybe set it to two points. Then I'm going to move our spider up a little bit so it looks like she's hanging from the frame. And then we quickly have to fix something here with our fence. Let's move this in a little bit. Now let's zoom out and we're almost done. I would just like to add one more visual element. I want to give it some texture. So I'll select our rectangle that fills our whole artboard. Then I'm going to create a copy to the front. So I simply press Ctrl or Command C and then Ctrl or Command and F, paste it into the front. And then I'm going to Object, Arrange and Bring to Front. With the rectangle still selected, let's go to Effect, Sketch, and then let's choose Graphic Pen. Now here in the pop-up, let's make sure the stroke direction is set to horizontal. For the light and dark balance, I have it set to 11 and the stroke length to 15. And then I press OK. Of course, now we don't see our design anymore. So let's go to Opacity and let's set it from Normal to Multiply. And at the same time, let's set the opacity all the way down to 10%. And as you can see, we now have just a slight texture on top of our design. And that is it. We are almost ready. We just need to do one more step. We need to create one more rectangle. And that rectangle has to be just a little bit bigger because I want this card to be ready to be printed. So if at home, you can just print it out on any cardstock, any thicker cardstock on your inkjet or laser printer. And so you don't have to just eyeball it where you're going to cut. I want to add some crop marks. So we're going to select our rectangle again. And then we're going back to object, path, and then again, offset path. But of course, instead of the minus value, we need a positive value now. Let's have it offset to nine points. I'll check the preview and then I click OK. So I need some crop marks when I print it out on the regular letter size cardboard. So all I'm going to do is select the original size of our rectangle, the five by seven inches. And then I'm going to go to effect and I'm going to choose crop marks. And as you can see here, it added crop marks for me. So when I print it out now on a regular letter size, I can just use the cutter and a ruler and cut it exactly along the crop marks. 
So let me show you here in the print preview. As you can see here, if I zoom in, you can see if I print it on a regular inkjet printer and I choose letter size, you can see that it's going to print those crop marks as well. So I'm going to cancel. Now we have the crop marks and we could print it, but we need to do just a few more fixes. As you can see here, our orange would bleed and we can cut it off. But we also need to extend our black grass here and of course the texture we added. So let's fix these things really quickly. So we need to extend this rectangle here. And since our whole background is 9 points larger all the way around, on each side we need to add 9 points, meaning 18 points altogether for the width and the height. So let's open up the transform panel and then let's watch what happens if I add that value here into our width. So all I have to do is press the plus, write 18 and it will add 18 points to the width. And the same thing we're going to do for the height. Again, I write plus 18 and as you can see, we've increased the size from our texture. Next, we're going to zoom in down here to our grass and then with the direct selection tool, I'm going to select the points out here and then I'm just going to press the shift key and the arrow key to the left, which will increase it in 10 points. And then I just take one point back and we've added basically nine points to it. The same thing, of course, I'm going to do to the other side. Again, I'm selecting those two anchor points. I hold the shift key, press the arrow key to the right, and that's it. And then we just have to extend it here onto the bottom. Now, if I zoom out, this is our card. It's ready to be printed. And this is it. This is the end of this tutorial. We've created here a really cool looking Happy Halloween or Haunted House card. And again, if you want to make your life a little bit easier, you don't have the time to create all of those haunted house or Halloween assets yourself, make sure you check out the link below in the descriptions or go to vectortwist.com and there you can purchase the vector shapes or even the bone brush if you like. I hope you really enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.